All right, guys, take a look at this full suspension double battery bike. It's made by Hachi. It's called the Cheetah. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a full review on it and see how well this bike does. So let's get into it. The Cheetah comes in one size and two different colors. You get this pretty cool looking green, or they also have black. It comes in two modes. You can get a 16 amp single battery, or you can get this 25 amp dual battery version. The single battery version sells for $17.99, and it's supposed to go between 50 and 55 miles on a charge. This dual battery version sells for $19.99, and they say it'll do between 65 and 85 miles on a single charge. Now you guys know me, I'm gonna end up doing a distance test on this bike later to see how close it actually is to those numbers. When it comes to weight, both versions of this bike can hold up to 400 pounds. Now the single battery version is 73 pounds, but this dual battery version is around 85 pounds. The rear hub motor is a Banks 750 watt, 48 volt rear hub motor. The transmission is a Shimano seven speed transmission with a turny derailleur. Stopping power for the Cheetah is delivered by a set of Gemma hydraulic brakes, 180 millimeter rotors on the front and rear. Upon first glance, you would probably think that this has a mid-drive motor, but it doesn't. It's got a cadence sensor in it, and the controller just goes inside this nice little pocket right here. As you can see, the Cheetah has this RST guide, full suspension, adjustable front fork, and there's 90 millimeters of play. The bike is made out of 6061 aluminum, like most of the bikes that we review. This does have metal pedals, a quick release post, and a decently comfortable looking seat. The Cheetah comes with these 26 by four inch fat tires. The tread on here looks, seems to be a little bit more aggressive or maybe taller than what uh, I've reviewed on some other bikes. It does have a quick release and these are puncture resistant tires. This back rack says it has a maximum weight of 15 kilograms and that equals 33 pounds. The battery in this frame is a 48 volt, 16 amp hour, 768 watt hour battery. Now, when you add it with this one, as you can see, it just pops out. This battery is 48 volt, 8.7 amp hours with 417 watt hours. So when you add those two together, the 768 plus the 417, well, we're talking about 12, 1300 watts of power. I think you can go pretty far with something like that. Plus when you combine these two batteries, it becomes a 25 amp series instead of a 16 amp series. As you can see, the secondary battery goes into the bike, into the controller through that connection right there. The double battery one might be the way to go. If you have the double battery version of the Cheetah, well, you're gonna get two separate keys. So you will need one key to unlock one battery, another key to unlock this battery. This battery is removable, this battery is removable, but they, it only comes with one charger and that's a 2.0 charger. So you're looking at six to nine hours to charge these batteries up. Now, one thing I have noticed is that it's very hard for me to get the battery out of this bike. There's a key on the other side, you turn it, it's supposed to pop out, and then you have this second lever right here. But my version, it's getting stuck in there. You do not have to remove the batteries to charge them. You have a charging port right here and one right here. The thing that makes this bike special besides the double battery is this full suspension part right here. This shock, this is a fast ace shock and it has 50 millimeters of play. Let's check out the cockpit on the Cheetah. Right here, we have a half twist throttle. You have your standard Shimano seven speed gear system right here. This is not my ideal one for this. I love one that has trigger shifters, but I mean, this one will do. You have a display screen here, it's monochrome, but I have a feeling that it'll show you all the information you need. See, look at that, boom, right there it is. You can see that you have watt hours, time, distance, just your standard issues. As you can see, we got a little bit of power off the bike here. How many pedal assists? One, two, three, four, five levels of pedal assist. All right, good job there. Rubber grips, I added the mirror, and you have your hydraulic brake levers, which feel pretty good. By holding this plus button, it's gonna turn on your headlight. Just turned on. And it lights up your tail light. This tail light is awfully bright. You'll have to put it together during the installation. You'll have to hook it to your rack, but it is also a brake light. 
Now, I do want to mention a couple of things. When I put this bike together and they sent it to me, first of all, it does come with a bell. Mine got destroyed in shipping. Thank you, FedEx. You're the best. And the tools that they sent with this bike wasn't actually everything I needed to put this bike together. So keep that in mind uh, when it comes to that point. Uh, I think if it was, if I remember the pedal, the, the wrench that comes to put the pedals on, doesn't fit. So you'll need, you'll need a different one for that. Also this fender, rear fender, super hard to get on. The bolt didn't, the hole where the bolt goes through, through for this back part of the fender seems to be either not threaded in far enough or something. So if you start turning and you're trying to get that bolt in there and it, it stops, two things are gonna happen. You're either gonna break the bolt or you're gonna strip it out. So I suggest that you just save yourself a bunch of headache if you have a problem and just zip tie that bad boy to the back of there because if not, it's gonna strip out like mine did, and I'll never be able to get this fender off. If you get the single battery version of this bike and decide, oh no, I should have got the double battery version, you can buy the second battery and they will send you a kit and a video on how to install this second battery onto this bike. That's what we did with this one. It originally came with one battery. I said, hey, I wanna test it out with the second one. So they ended up shipping it to me. And now we have the dual battery version. I have not tested it yet with the 25 amps, so, I'm pretty interested to see how it's gonna do. So let's get out on the road and see what she does. All right, guys, I ended up stopping for lunch, charged the batteries all the way up to full, and I haven't gone but a block or two. Well, and it jumped down. One of the top bars jumped down, but then it came back up. I was thinking, wow, we went through a lot of battery. That would have been crazy. So it's doing some voltage flexing by dropping down but it came right back up so here we are on the 606 we're going to go ahead and end up doing a distance test with this as well considering that the batteries are full and so we're just going to see what all this bike can do we are going to start off with the throttle test to see how fast this bike goes we are in pedal assist one i'm giving it the throttle it took off rather nicely we're going to see how fast we can go we are in pedal assist one, throttle is pulled back all the way. And we're doing about 17 and a half miles an hour. Let me see if changing it to pedal assist two makes a difference. Oh, it does. I felt it kick in further. So throttle only, pedal assist two. We are jumping up to 21 miles an hour. All right, pedal assist three, throttle only. We are at 22 miles an hour with pedal assist three throttle only, so we're gonna bump it up to four. We have already dropped a bar on battery power, which I find to be extremely odd since there is two batteries hooked to this bike and I completely charged both of the batteries up. We are at 25 miles an hour. All right, we kicked it into pedal assist five throttle only, and we are at 27 and a half miles an hour. We are going to cut across. Let's see uh, how easy this is going to be. I'm using throttle only, where I bumped it up to pedal assist five because I know that gives us more oomph. Making this turn, this bike is wide, but we did it. And we're just going to slowly creep. Oh, the torque in this thing definitely not a problem. Making it over this uh, very loud overpass. Nice. We are now out here on Lakeshore Drive and let's go ahead and do the 
pedal assist test and see where we are at when it comes to this bike. So let's go ahead and stop. We are in pedal assist one, and we're gonna see what kind of top speed we can get with that. So let's get going. Oh, tell you what, it's always good to kind of hit the throttle at first to get yourself going. 14 miles an hour on pedal assist one, pedal assist two. Not much of a difference. We are at 15 and a half, probably get 16 out of this. Oh, 17 miles an hour, out of pedal assist. There we go. <laughs> All right, so we had 17 miles out of pedal assist two. All right, pedal assist three. A solid 22 miles an hour. Pedal assist four. Not much of a difference, 23. I'm also heading against the wind. Pedal assist five. I feel a kick there. Uh, I wish this bike had an eighth gear. All right, 26. 27 miles an hour. At this point, I feel like I'm ghost pedaling a little bit. So 27. Let's see if I get a 28. All right, 28. But I am, it doesn't feel like my feet can keep up with the cadence. All right, back to throttle. We have gone 5.7 miles is what Strava tells us, and we have dropped a bar already on the uh, power output. One thing I have noticed about this bike is the seating position. This is an awfully long bike. It reminds me of like an enduro bike that you would use for mountain biking and it totally has that look. But one of the things that you need to realize is that it is long and because of that you you know you don't want to be like a really short person I'm assuming. And the seating position is also more aggressive than it is on many of the bikes that I've ridden. Now, the full suspension has made this totally comfortable riding through here. It was funny. I was thinking about putting a suspension seat post on this bike, and then I looked at it and I'm like, why? Why do I need to do that? And I don't. I don't need to do it. So here we are. This bike is absorbing all the stuff really good, but I've, I also looks like I have regenerative braking on this bike, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Hopefully you can see it in the camera, but we're doing about 18 miles an hour. I'm doing throttle only. I'm going to hit the brake and let's see if you can see this little emblem. It's going to light up right here. You see it? And that's regenerating to the battery. Now I can't imagine that doing a whole lot for the battery considering that you don't brake that very long, but I like the technology in it. One thing I didn't even know this had, so just by riding it around, and I saw that little emblem pop up and I'm like, all right, that has to mean something. Looked it up and it's regenerative braking. That power is going, it's supposed to go back to the battery, although I don't see it on the wattage meter. It doesn't show that it's going back to the battery. It's not giving me any negative amounts or anything like that. So I can only assume that it's possibly working, but I can also assume that it's not gonna do that much when it comes to battery life. All right, I want to take a minute and show you guys just how this bike, how you look when you're riding this bike, because it is longer. And so you have this more aggressive enduro look, like I mentioned before. As you can see, you're more of a forward stance and stuff. This bike is extremely tall. Let me show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, it is taller than me when standing up. And this is how I have to get it in the garage because I have two cars in there. And this is how tall it is compared to me. Yeah, which is pretty tall. Let's go ahead and take a look at, you know, what it looks like when, how the suspension works. I'm 230 pounds. The, susp the suspension works great. I mean, this thing is absorbing all of the hits so far. I mean, I'm, it's a nice ride. I'm not going to lie, but you know, since I, <laughs> this half throttle, by the way, you're leaning forward and you're hitting the half throttle. I, I just end up using that half throttle. I just, I'd ride this thing like a motorcycle. So this test is going to be mostly throttle. I feel like because this bike is super easy to ride like a motorcycle. And I don't know if that's, that's good or bad, if that's not what you're looking forward to. So we'll see. 
So let's get out and do some more testing. All right, guys, as you can see, it is a beautiful day here in Chicago. We are 9.98 miles into this trip. Well, actually, we're at 10.98 miles because I went a mile before I turned Strava on. And from there, I'm not really sure how far we can go because we did have four bars on the battery. We're down to the last two. And if we've only gone 11 miles, how far are we going to be able to go before I have to pedal this bike under my own power, which I would not be looking forward to? Now for the bases here, it's 48 degrees out. It's beautiful. Uh, I weigh 230 pounds. I have 20 pounds of pressure in the tires and I've been riding with this bike on pedal assist five and mostly throttle. So there you go. So let's keep going and see what we do. I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but uh, the battery just went back up to three bars. Also the handlebars on this are extremely wide. And this is why it reminds me of like a mountain bike, just because of the width of the handlebars. I'm okay, I mean, I like it. I think it makes it pretty stable, but it also does make you wanna just lean forward into it. The seat, pretty comfortable. I'm telling you, this is, with this full suspension, this is a pretty comfy ride. All right, look at this ahead of us. This is one heck of an incline. This is where I wanted to ride down to to see actually what 25 watts and an 85 Newton meter motor will do. So we are in pedal assist five. I'm gonna do throttle only going up here just to see how it feels. Uh, once I get to the top, I have a thing that's gonna tell us what the angle was on, uh, on, this. Oh, on this ramp. So let's go. Let's see how it does. Oh, we're picking up speed. Oh, this is going pretty easy. I'm not pedaling, it's just torquing on up. Nice. Not an issue for this bike at all. I am a long way from home. All right guys, we're gonna do the brake test. Let's see how fast we can get this thing going and how quick it will stop. Let's go, let's go. I'm gonna hit this line for a 24, 25. Woo! Well, I gotta run back and see how far that was. I gotta count it out. This thing is, this thing is heavy. And it doesn't, I mean, it stops, but that is a lot of weight to get going, but we were moving like 26 miles an hour. So let's do it again. Brake test number two. Oh, oh that's the same distance. Same distance. <sighs> Woo, now we know. All right, guys, we are at 20.34 miles. I'm down to one battery left, and that concerns me, or one battery bar left, and that concerns me because I am still pretty far away from home, and I'm not really sure this bike is gonna make it. Actually, once I did the hill climb, I ended up not using the throttle anymore, and I've been pedaling on Pedal Assist 4 uh, to get to here. So we're gonna see if I actually am gonna make it. Uh, I hope I do. I'm kind of optimistic, but then I'm also kind of not. 
So let's see, let's see how it goes. We are back. I was able to put about 31 to 32 miles on this bike before the battery went, not, it didn't even go dead. Here's the thing that confuses me about this display is because the battery power shows at an angle, when it goes down to the last bar, you feel like you're out of battery. So because of that, you start to panic and feel that you need to get wherever you're gonna get to. But that little hash of a battery is actually a full bar but mentally it's going to make you think that it's not going to go as far as it does this bike went i think pretty far like i said 31 32 miles and that's pretty good now let's talk about some things that i do like about the bike this full suspension for riding around super nice right like that really helped with the ride also i like how this bike looks <laughs> during the ride i had some people when i would stop at a stoplight or whatever and they're walking their dog or whatnot they're like nice bike and i'm like well thank you you know so that's that's a great thing. This bike looks cool. It does have that enduro feel about it because you know you got to be more stretched out to ride it and the bars are wider. So there's a lot of good things about this this bike. There's a couple of uh, things that I wish were a little bit better. Number one, the shifter. Um, I mean, it's okay, but you know, I wish that it had trigger shifters on it. The seat, although it looks comfy, um, I feel it after 31 miles and I've been on some other bikes that I've gone that far, but the seat pretty much lasted really well for that long of a trip. It's just, I don't know how much longer I would have wanted to have gone on this seat. Also, the display. The display, it's, it's hard to see when, uh, when you have direct sunlight on it. Um, I don't like how the battery thing, I would rather it tell you what kind of per battery percentage you have as opposed to just those crazy bars. That would be, ideal but guys besides that i mean this bike did really excellent i think and uh, i can't wait to, so the next time you're going to see me with this bike will be on a mountain bike trail because you know i got to test out this full suspension bad boy on a mountain bike trail i do believe that the second battery did come in super handy and because i did have a lot of power when it came going up these long inclines or whatnot one thing I noticed is that on the website, it doesn't actually say like what the, what the ideal height for this bike should be. With me at 5'9", this bar is at 29 inches from the ground. I have a 31 inch inseam. I mean, for me, it was comfortable. I mean, look how high up I have the seat. But I did look on their website and I went through their reviews and I saw where somebody was 5'3", and they said the bike was manageable. And I'm thinking with that kind of reach, okay. All right, that's not exactly what I would have expected, but 5'3", I guess, to 10 feet, right? <laughs> no, how about like, who knows? The sky's the limit on how high. The, well, you know what? Let's find out. The seat post goes up to, yowza. Oh, right, here's, right here is the maximum, right there. So however tall that is, that's how tall you can be to ride this bike. Well, I'll just lean on this thing from here. So if you're interested in this bike, go ahead, click the link down in the description below. That'll take you to where you need to be. If you end up buying one, well, that's great. That helps support the channel. And it also lets Hachi know that you guys value my videos. I really appreciate you watching. I'll see you again. And until then, enjoy the ride.